We need to go through this holy time with our hearts and with our souls. It's kind of like visiting Ireland. I've never visited Ireland before, but it's something I'd love to do because I see all these beautiful pictures of Ireland. And I think to myself, oh, what a wonderful place to visit, you know, all the green and the stonework and all of that. But I'll tell you something, if I went to Ireland, I would go on a soul journey. You know, some people, they go on a vacation, they have a checklist. They want to do this, do this, do this, see this, see this, and buy the shirt. And they don't take any time to actually take in, you know, the wonder of the place, to be still and just let the place, you know, not only touch your eyes and ears, but get right deep down into your soul. And it seems to me like Ireland is one of those places, you know, just a wonderful, you know, place of mystery, a kind of a place of enchantment in some ways. And as a matter of fact, you know, they say there's all these, I don't know what, you know, pilgrim uh, trails, all these trails you can walk through Ireland. To me, that'd be perfect, that perfect pace, just, just walking slowly through Ireland, going from pub to pub to, oops, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Anyways, you get the point, you know, we're supposed to kind of, do things from, from the soul. It reminds us of uh, Catherine Dory, the founder of Madonna House. She said, you know, during Lent and Easter, you kind of need to fold the wings of your intellect and open wide your heart to really grasp, to really be affected by the wonders that we're celebrating. And most of us, we get this. We're human. You know, we know that our intellect, wonderful gift, it has its limits. It can only take us so far. Kind of like if a person owns a little sailboat. You know, if you own a little sailboat, typically to get out of the marina, you either oar out or you have a little two horsepower motor, you know, a little wee motor, and you, you get out of the marina. But once you're out into the open water, then you open up the sails because the oars and the, or the little outboard motor is not going to do much in the big open sea. And so too, you know, some of the great mysteries of God, you need to kind of let your heart, let your soul take it all in. Now, I do want to mention though that, again, the intellect is never to be completely put aside. You know, as Catholics, we don't believe that when we come into the church, we should check our brains at the entrance, you know, or turn off our brains. No, no, the intellect is very important. As a matter of fact, the command is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so we're commanded to love God with all our mind. And also, you know, we were made by God, and the Lord is, in John, the beginning, they call him, he's called the Word. And the Greek word is the logos. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All, everything came to be through him. And so we're made in the image of God through his word, the logos. And so it makes sense that as children of God, we're supposed to be logical. We're supposed to apply our reason. We're supposed to use our intellect and, uh, and seek the truth, you know, in, a, in an intellectual way. It's one of our duties. As a matter of fact, at the previous Mass, the 9 o'clock Mass, we celebrated the scrutinies in preparation for our elect who will be baptized. And so there were special readings in the Gospel. We're, we're, we're reading the Gospel of John now in a lot of our liturgies, but the Gospel was the raising of Lazarus. And I want to say a word about the raising of Lazarus. Beautiful story. But to me, the raising of Lazarus, it's a bit of, a, it's a bit of an intellectual moment. Obviously, it's a soul moment, but it's interesting. So Lazarus dies, and it says, Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. The Lord is going to do something so that his disciples believe. And, and again, I believe it's, it, it's a bit of an intellectual common sense moment. And you know, sometimes as Catholics, we get into to Catholic autopilot. We hear the story of, you know, the, one of the Lord's great works, like raising Lazarus from the dead, and we're like, oh yeah, that's neat. You know, I remember that story. Well, okay, so, so listen, think about it. Lazarus dies. This is in Bethany, by the way. They give all the details shortly after the resurrection. The people of Bethany, they would have never forgotten this. Like this is, everyone experiences in the town of Bethany. So Lazarus dies. 
He's in the tomb for four days, wrapped up in a tomb. He wasn't just dead, he was real dead. And the Lord Jesus shows up. This teacher, you know, this, this, this preacher, he shows up. Apparently he has power. And he orders the tomb to be rolled away and then says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out back to life. Now that's astounding. It's staggering. Now why am I emphasizing this? There were many at the time of Jesus who didn't believe in him. There were many who were opposing him. There were many who were saying, telling people, oh, don't believe in Jesus. Don't believe what he's saying. You know, the Lord had a, had a message. Repent. Believe. Forgive your enemies. Love. You have a Father who loves you infinitely and has a place in heaven prepared for you. Believe in him. Ask, and you will receive from him. Our Lord Jesus has this message. And people are saying, oh, don't believe him. So again, the thinking, reasoning, reasoning, intellectual person would say, well, wait a minute. Why should I believe you? You're telling me not to believe him. He just rose someone from the dead. He was in the tomb for four days. He gives blind people their sight back. Deaf people hear. Lame people walk. Demons are cast out. He multiplies food, feeds thousands, walks on water. And you're telling me not to believe him? Seriously? Why should I believe you? And again, our Lord Jesus, he makes this argument himself. In John chapter 5, our Lord Jesus says, I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. You know, people, I believe my guru. My guru said he's got everything figured out. Well, why should we listen to your guru? Is he raising the dead? Is he giving sight to the blind? Some people say, oh, the experts. Experts are saying, you know, we shouldn't believe in God and heaven anymore. That's, that's passe. Well, who decided they're an expert? Why should we believe the so-called experts? You know, or the latest pop psychologist has a new theory, you know, dismissing Christianity. In whose name are they coming? Like, why are we believing them? And I say this because I fell into this as a teenager. As a teenager, I thought all the, you know, the intellectuals or the people in the, in the media or the so-called experts, that they had all the answers. And so many of them didn't seem to believe in, in God, didn't seem to believe in Catholicism, dismissed the Lord Jesus. And then I started studying the lives of some of the saints, you know, Saint Padre Pio. St. Francis of Assisi, St. Brother Andre. And I'm reading about them, I'm thinking to myself, like, wait a minute, God's working mightily in the life of St. Padre Pio, and people are witnessing this. Maybe I'll start believing him rather than the experts who say God isn't real. You know, wh wh why, sh why should I believe, <laughs> you know, again, the latest so-called expert? The Lord Jesus also this is right before the raising of Lazarus in chapter 10. The raising of Lazarus is in chapter 11. The Lord Jesus says, even if you do not believe me, believe the works. Again, the Lord is applying very much to our intellect here, the gift of reason, common sense. Okay, you don't believe me, but you saw that guy who was blind. Everyone knew he was blind. Everyone in the town knew he's been blind for a real long time. Now he sees. You don't believe me? Maybe take a look at that. Believe that. Again, lame people walking, deaf people hearing, raising the dead, like seriously. Uh, to, to, to dismiss Jesus and believe some person who's got a, I don't know what, degree in philosophy or theology, like seriously. No offense to people with degrees in philosophy and theology. I give that example because that's what I have degrees in, you know. But the point is, is uh, again, now, now the thing is, is, Again, going back to the example of God's wonderful miracles, I could stand up here all day and speak of how the Lord continues and throughout the age has continued to work his signs so that we may believe. There's endless examples I, I could give. I'll give you one example. I just read this yesterday. Or was it the day before? It doesn't matter. Blessed Miguel Pro, Mexican martyr, martyred in 1927. He was shot dead in front of a firing squad. His, his uh, crime was being a priest. 
It was a time when Catholicism was outlawed. He was just in his 30s, a young man. Uh, very popular because he was doing so much work underground for the, for the poor and, and, and the destitute. They brought him in front of a firing squad and they brought, the, the, the governor brought in all the, the media and they wanted to photograph the execution of Father Pro to show Catholics what happens when you go against the government. So they photographed his execution. You can see the pictures. They're very well, well known. After he was killed... They spread those pictures throughout Mexico City, and guess what? Every Catholic in the city wanted a copy because they considered them relics, pictures of their saintly priest being murdered. Everyone wanted a copy, so much so, the governor had to withdraw them, try to withdraw them, and make it illegal to have a picture of Miguel Pro being, can, uh, being, being uh, executed. So check this out. He's executed, and word gets out. The holy young priest was killed by a firing squad. So what did people do? <laughs> they began to pray for his intercession. They believed he was a saint. And one of the documented examples, there was miracles happening immediately. A poor old woman who had been blind for six years and was therefore unable to leave her suburban town to attend the funeral was persuaded by a friend to ask Father Pro's help. As soon as she finished her prayer, she arose full of joy, declaring that she could see. The friend, unable to believe that the woman's prayer could have been answered so quickly, asked her to read a newspaper aloud, which she did without difficulty. Everyone knew this woman. She's been blind for six years. She asked Miguel Pro for, to, to, for help with her sight. Now she's reading the newspaper. And again, the story's galore. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, that he died for you so that you could have eternal life? Do you believe this? You should. Again, God bless all the experts out there. I don't want to bad talk all the experts or gurus or whoever else, pop psychologists or, you know, whoever else. But Jesus Christ came in power. He came not only in word, but in action. He came with love and authority. He changed the world. And we live in a world today that's saying, oh, you know, Christianity, passe, don't believe all that stuff. Too bad. I believe in Jesus. Because he's not just talk, he's action. He continues to change lives. He continues to set people free, to work miracles. He is the Lord. He is the Savior. He is, he is, a, he is God among us, Emmanuel. And again, I don't exactly know what my point is here. I'm getting a little excited. My point is as we get into, you know, this holy season and contemplate the work, the saving work of Jesus, that he laid his life down out of love for us, I encourage you, think about the reality of how Jesus changed the world. Use your intellect, but even more, open wide. Open wide your heart to the God who wants desperately to make you new, to set you free. He wants to fill you with his love. He wants you to know him personally. All you need to do is open your heart to Jesus. He will come in and he will give you eternal life.